Hi guys, uh, welcome to Investing with JYK, and today we'll talk about a um, insurance company, a life insurance company. So the name of the company is Bright House Financial. It uh, was a spin-off from MetLife in uh, mid-2017, so they've been separate for, independent for like nine months. Uh, the reason I like this company is that they're extremely cheap. Um, so first, let's look at their evaluation. Uh, the main thing I'm going to look at is going to be PB. Right? So their PB is like 0 0.24. It was 0 0.24, oh, sorry, 0 0.42. It used to be 0 0.48, now it's 0 0.42. Uh, they're losing money at the moment, uh, but it seems to be getting better. And if you look at their, uh, sorry, if I do, um, financials and I do like quarterly financials. And if you just look at the, uh, net income, it was crap. It was some, it goes crap and then goes better and it goes crap and it goes better again seems to go in the right uh, direction and a lot of that loss is from what I understand is related to the spin-off itself there's a lot of uh, uh, spin-off related uh, cost um, and uh, if you remember they were, they were selling at 0 0.42 and then uh, Sorry, let me just go back to key stats, right? And yeah, so this is what I was gonna show you the uh, in terms of uh, their numbers and their financials. And to compare that to uh, other life insurance companies, I, I picked like a bunch. Uh, if you look at uh, a price to tangible book, it's about one. This guy's about a one. And this is uh, Prudential, it's about a one. These are all big ones. Lincoln National Prudential. And this is a mid-sized one, this is about one. And American National Insurance, it's about 0 0.6 and 0 0.7. Uh, this guy is super expensive in terms of tangible book. Not sure why. And this one is actually a small, yeah, this is actually a small cap. This is a small cap as well, so it's a 2. This one is a small cap, and it's 0 0.63. So what you see is Bright House seems to be the cheapest of all in terms of um, price tangible value. And now you say, yeah, but these guys are making money, right? Their P's are all positive, right? Their P, well, this guy's P is actually negative. For some reason, it's still uh, get, getting a really high evaluation. This guy's P is positive, it's positive, 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 positive. Everybody's positive, except Bright House, which is nicked. Um, okay, so this is, um, I think there were two ways of approaching this kind of situation. Yeah, it's, they're really cheap, but uh, what is the future for them? Will they keep losing money? Is the question that we, we have to answer. And one way is we can look at their uh, financial statements and trying to understand each item and trying to project out things. Uh, I have to admit, I cannot understand how these insurance companies' balance sheet work. I am somewhat confident that the um, uh, the accounting standards are relatively standardized that it's not going to be BS but I really don't understand because they have a bunch of derivatives that I have no idea what they were and so what I decided to do is try to uh, approach this from a mean reversion uh, angle in the sense that since life insurance is a uh, long is a very old industry right so I was looking at this the first life insurance 
in U.S. began in 1760. So essentially, it's not a uh, a business that has anything that is like a hidden, like secret sauce of of, of any sort. Uh, so in the end, people will just all the all these company will would. Uh, gravitate towards the, some kind of similar return on equity. And my bet is that um, Bright House will converge to that return on equity as well. So let's look at the return on equity of these guys. Uh, so okay, so look at this ROE is about 6%. You can see they've gone from as bad as 1%. I don't know what happened in 2016. Um, but there's 8%, 6%, so maybe like 6.5-ish. Uh, and their ROA is 0 point something. So typically 12 times uh, levered. Uh, ROIC is about 8, 6, so 6% 6 maybe. So that's uh, this is MetLife. Right, and then if we look at Lincoln National, they are slightly better and they get about 10%, I would say. And again, it's like 12 times levered. And uh, ROIC is about 10%. And Prudential, uh, they've gone as bad as, well, if you look at this, it's about 10%. And ROA, you know, 12 times levered, very similar. Uh, this is slightly more levered, slightly more levered, like 13 times. ROIC is like 10, I'd say. Right, so if you look at the graph somewhere in here, maybe slightly less than 10, maybe like 8. And this American equity, whatever crap, uh, you're looking at 6%. It's kind of like a 6%-ish. Sometimes they do really, really well, but 6%, let's say, and ROA, again, they're very levered. They're actually really levered. This guy is, this guy is like 30, 20 times, 20, more than 20 times levered. ROIC is all over the place, but maybe 0.2. And if we keep looking at those, you got this company, whatever, American National Insurance. Um, ROE is about eight, seven. Uh, not very levered. Only about six times, five, six times. ROIC is about uh, seven, I would say, ish. All right, so. And then if you look at this, this one is actually less profitable. It's like 3%, uh, 4%, 5%, something like that. And ROA, very low. ROIC is like, again, about 5%. This guy, this guy is super profitable for some whatever reason. Uh, RO, ROE is like 20, so let's say 18%. ROA is very high. I don't know what they sell. This is crazy. Uh, but... This is an anomaly, and this guy is losing money, and this guy is at six percent. Okay, so you get the idea. Basically, these guys are uh, all these life insurance companies. We looked in like six, seven of them. Uh, they sell. Uh, they they get about uh, six to ten percent ROE. And uh, they're typically 10 times or more levered. Um, and uh, that's actually the same case. The leverage is the same case with uh, Bright House. Um, but at the moment, Bright House's uh, ROE is negative, obviously. You can see that is negative 12%. So my bet is that this will converge back to 8%. So there are. Uh... Oh, there's one more data point. Uh, so this is Fidelity's uh, key stats, so it's quite useful, but they lump all the insurance companies into this. So it's not exactly apples to apples, because in here we try to choose, I try to pick the life insurance and annuity sellers. Um, 
you can see the uh, industry average uh, price to book is 1.8, uh, and uh, their um, ROE, where is it? operating margin, is 10%. This guy is at negative six, and ROE is about 10, or TTM is about nine, so nine ten. Uh, leverage about six times. So again, clearly, this is not the normal um, life insurance company. This includes all the casualty insurance and all that, uh, right? So, okay. So why do I think this will revert back to normal? So first of all, I know that they recently separated out from MetLife and then in their uh, annual report they talked about their uh, their costs associated currently with using MetLife, MetLife's um, services uh, as they continue to build out their own. The other thing is I looked at their, exec uh, their executive team so they don't seem to be BS people. Uh, these, this guy has been um, in MetLife forever, he used to be a CFO, then became the uh, I think the chief operating officer of some sort. Uh, so he's been working in. Um, uh, oh yeah, he no, he was uh, executive VP for MetLife's retail. I think. Yeah, he was in MetLife for eighteen years, and this guy's been. Uh, in uh, AIG and in MetLife since 2014 and this guy, the COO guy, has been uh, in MetLife since 2009 and they, they were the, the, the uh, working as chief accounting officer so and then he's been working in finance forever uh, he left uh, Arthur Anderson, haha <laughs> funny, the uh, Enron uh, auditor. So these people have been in the industry forever so they're not gonna mess you up too bad in my opinion. There's some as costs associated with uh, the separation from MetLife and these are all one time so these will disappear so um, my assumption is that my thesis is that this company will eventually go to a 6 to 8 percent ROE. So let's say if they went to a 6 times, a 6 percent ROE, what would that give us? Um, the current uh, PB is 0 0.42, right? So 6 divided by 0 0.42 actually 0 0.6 0 0.06 so we end up with, with a 14% earnings yield in the sense um, or if you want to think of a PE that would be um, uh, 7 PE basically if they end up doing 6% uh, ROE they will be do, uh, they will be at a 7 PE and uh, if they do an 8% um, uh, eight percent uh, ROE, then they should be you know, uh, looking at forty-two divided by eight, so that should be a five times PE. So that is going to be super cheap. And if you think about PB, most of these uh, companies, their PB was between, I think, it was something like zero point eight to one. Uh, let's just check it again. All right, so you got okay. So this is yeah MetLife. So we started with MetLife. Tangible book one. Tangible book is uh, zero point eight. Tangible book is one. Zero point six. So point eight. This is a crazy one. Let's ignore that. Twos. Um, and then you got. 0 0.6. So you got something between 0 0.6 and 0. Point and, and 1 or something. And let's ignore the ones that have like 2 PBs or something like that. So let's take an average 0 
that means the upside should be 8 divided by 4.2 uh, 4 uh, 90%. So I'm expecting a, an upside of 90%. And not much downside in the sense that I don't see them continually losing money. Right, so that book value should remain there for uh, the foreseeable future. Um, and this also plays into the... Well, let's look at the price first. Uh, PHF. So if you look at... So that's when they went public. So it went down to 54, went all the way back up to like close to 70, and then went down to 50 again. Now. Uh, this is quite common for spin-offs. Spin for spin-offs that are not sexy, they typically drop in value a lot. This is talked about in Joe Greenblatt's book. If you have a chance, uh, read his book. Uh, you can be a stock genius, stock market genius too, or something. There's a book talks about uh, 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 talks about uh, special situation investing, and this is one of the things that he suggests that you should um, invest in spin-offs, especially on a small one. The reason is that people that bought in MetLife don't want Bright House Financial, so there will be some kind of brainless selling. Because they will be like, oh, I have MetLife, why is this BHF stuff in my portfolio let me sell that and um, in this case it's not the market cap isn't too large or too small but sometimes when the market cap drops below let's say the most common um, uh, like drops below the threshold of the most common index let's say five sp500 people would have to sell the funds that are uh, that are uh, restricted by the prospectus to hold S&P 500 or large cap will be forced to sell these companies uh, regardless of their um, their fundamentals. So that is another source of selling. So when we're buying, what we want is a lot of supply. You want the price to be low. So this, is, I think, is the right time to buy. Uh, the company after separation has it went from like seventy dollars on all the way to fifty, so that is a loss of uh, twenty divided by seventy. So you're looking at twenty nine percent. It's dropped twenty nine percent, and uh, it hasn't deteriorated at all. If anything, it has improved um, in its operations, as we saw in this graph here. Where where is that stuff? in the net income here it was slightly it was improving and yeah so i think um give it another year this company should return you should give you a fairly good return uh, the upside as we as i calculated was like 90 percent Let's see if it happens. Obviously, if the market drops in a crash, everything goes to shit, and including this, probably. Uh, but that is just part of life. Okay, um, if you like this, please subscribe and click like and you know, make suggestions, leave a comment, don't be a stranger. Um, see you next time.